Hi friends, Andrew Goodall here once again with more on the Panasonic Lumix G9. This video is all about the post focus and focus stacking function. It's a remarkable feature that lets you take your photo now and choose what to focus on later. But before we get started I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Every time I learn something new I make a video about it, so subscribing is the best way to find out what comes next. There is a bit of a backstory to this. Post focus was one of the functions that intrigued me right from the start when I got the G9 and it was going to be a subject of one of my first videos. But on my very first attempt results were mixed, and by mixed I mean really bad. So I kind of shelved the idea and moved on to other things. But I've always liked the idea of the post focus function so I decided it's time for another look. So what is the post focus function all about? Well it's a variation on what we've always known as focus stacking, where you take a bunch of photos of the same scene with the focus shifting slightly with each shot. Then those photos can be merged into a single image file, giving you total control of exactly how much of your image is in and out of focus. Until recently you had to use special techniques and sometimes special apparatus to take the photos, then use advanced software to take care of the stacking. On the G9 we have a function that does it all in camera using the 4K and 6K video feature. It's a really clever bit of technology that takes all the photos with a single press of the button and then lets you choose which parts of your photo you want to be in or out of focus. Rather than trying to explain it any further, let me just show you how it's done. Like most things on the G9, post focus is very easy to set up. First turn the release mode dial to the fifth position, the one with the flower and mountain symbol. Then go into the first part of the menu and scroll down until you find the post focus heading. You can choose between shooting with 4K which produces an 8 megabyte file or 6K which produces a much larger 18 megabyte file. Now get out of the menu and you're ready to shoot. Press the button and watch as the camera maps all the focus points and then takes the sequence of shots. Then a few seconds of processing time and now you're ready for the next step. Now that your shot's been taken, this is where the post focus concept kicks in. In review, you can choose any focus point and the camera will preview what that picture will look like. Here I choose a foreground point and click set. When I choose to save, the camera creates a separate JPEG image. Now I can go back to the original and pick a different focus point, this time in the background. Now I have two completely different versions of the same scene, both created from the same original 6K file. Now onto the focus stacking. You don't have to settle for just one focus point or another. You can choose a group of focus points using range merging or let the camera take charge with auto merging. To try this, go back to review the original and press the function 1 button or the function 1 icon on the screen. When you select range merging, you can tap the points on the screen you want to be in focus and the camera will merge the files into a single JPEG. Also starting with function 1, you can select auto merge and let the camera do the work for you. Now, as you can imagine, it takes some processing time to merge all those 6K files into one photo. In fact, it took almost a minute with this example, so I'm cutting the clip short and let's just go straight to the result. What we have is a single JPEG constructed from all the focus points selected by the camera. So far so good until you look a little closer at the results. In parts of the image, outlines around the objects get a bit weird. I'm sure this happens where a focus point has overlapped a bit of foreground and a bit of background. Then in the processing, the camera can't quite manage the fine differentiation required and we end up with a bit of a mess. So the camera could easily handle creating an image using one focus point or another, but it really didn't do well with the auto merge. And this isn't a one-off. Here's another test where we had no problem producing a focused background, no problem with a focused foreground, but a major fail trying to put it all together. So there's a problem here and it's not with the technology, it's with the way I'm trying to use it. It didn't take long to figure out that the complex background in both these examples made it impossible for the camera to properly separate background from subject. What I need is a simpler setup with a less messy background. So next the Easter Bunny and I set up a little project on my kitchen table. Now we have a collection of separate and distinct individual subjects with no distracting background to complicate things. Shot using the post focus method, I can now select any individual point to be in focus and it works just fine, just like before. More importantly, now you can see that the auto merge also does a much better job to produce a workable image. In fact, with some decent lighting and a bit more time spent on the setup, I could really have something here. So what you can achieve with the G9's post focus system will depend on what sort of photography you're doing. 
For outdoors in nature, focus stacking might be unreliable, but there is still great potential for using post focus, and I can already see some interesting ways to use it. But for things like macro, food photography, product photography, the post focus combined with the focus stacking opens up a whole range of possibilities. If you're interested in trying post focus and focus stacking for yourself, just think of all the different types of photography you do and you'll find those situations where they work for you. So I really hope you've enjoyed my little journey of trial and error figuring out post focus on the Lumix G9. I've never claimed to be an expert and as you can see from this video I'm just figuring things out as I go along. Most of the tutorials I've seen simply show how well post focus works on one perfectly chosen subject without even mentioning where things might go wrong. So for all of you who are still figuring things out, I hope you found something of value here. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe. There's more new content on the way and I look forward to sharing it with you. I'm Andrew Goodall of Nature's Image Photography. Thanks for watching.